Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The shallow, broad-based, infrabony pocket can be suitably treated by ostectomy. A Hirschfeld point shows that the infrabony defect is approximately three millimeters in depth. Infiltration anesthesia is generally adequate for this surgical procedure. This is administered on the lingual, distal, and buccal surfaces. An internal beveled incision is made with the scalpel and it follows the contour of the gingival tissues in the molar and premolar regions. When the mesial aspect of the second premolar is reached, a vertical releasing incision is made. A periosteal elevator is used to reflect a full thickness flap of lingual tissue from its underlying base. Two horizontal releasing incisions have been made with the beaver knife. They are parallel to each other and permit the tissue in the retromolar area to be reflected buccally. An intrasocular gingival incision is made on the buccal aspect of the first molar and premolar. Full thickness flap is then reflected on the buccal surface to expose the osseous defect distal to the molar. The probe now enters this shallow infrabony trough. Since it is such a shallow infrabony lesion, reattachment procedures are not feasible, and an osseous autograft would probably be unsuccessful. Therefore, the rotary diamond stone is utilized to eliminate this defect behind the last tooth. Contouring of the alveolar process permits a rise to develop in the osseous tissue distal to the molar. The rise in this septum tends to simulate what is referred to as physiologic osseous architecture. The buccal plate in the area of the furcation is also contoured. The crest of bone is blended around the buccal aspect to assure the establishment of physiologic osseous architecture. A Wiedelstadt chisel is used to contour the alveolar crest. A shallow spillway is created in the osseous tissue between the second premolar and first molar. Care is taken to ensure an adequate water spray so that the osseous tissue is not excessively heated. 
By tracing the crest of the buccal plate from the distal to the interradicular area and then to the mesial of the first molar, it is obvious that an attempt has been made to produce physiologic contours in the alveolar process. A marked interdental groove is seen in the septum. This drawing shows the area that has just been treated. The dark red lines outline the incisions that were made in the retromolar area. Two horizontal incisions, running from buccal to lingual, were created distal to the molar and connected on the lingual surface. A full thickness flap was reflected, exposing the osseous defect marked OD. The bone is marked B. A rotary diamond stone is used buccolingually to correct this defect by removing its bony wall. The letters ODR indicate that the osseous defect has been removed. This final drawing shows the repositioning of the retromolar flap and its suturing to the lingual flap and distal tissues. These drawings do not illustrate the reflection of the lingual flap as was demonstrated in this film. Two months postoperatively, the tissues appear to be healing well. A shallow sulcus can be demonstrated by the probe which is inserted around the molar. Note that the tissue distal to the molar is flat buccolingually. Although the tooth structure is sound below the margin of this amalgam, a new restoration will be inserted. The two-month post-operative radiograph demonstrates that the infrabony pocket has been eliminated and a flat alveolar crest is present on the mesial and distal surfaces of the molar tooth. The elimination of this shallow defect should enhance the prognosis of the tooth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.